You're listening to Wedding and Event Insider. This is Paul. My my favorite reaction, especially when I see it from a, a, a lot of the ladies, because they control the dance floor, believe it or not, is like when you play a song and they just go, ooh, or they put their hands up in the air, that's my song, and they grab their friends yeah. and they go out on the dance floor. To me, that is just like magic. That's when you know you have the crowd where you want them and then you can just, you know, take them on a trip. Our guest today is one of the top DJs in the Twin Cities wedding and event industry. He has been featured in The Knot magazine, has over 20 years experience in the industry, and his love of music dates back to watching his own dad flip eight tracks in their family car while driving around Brooklyn, New York. Listen in as DJ Greg Ellis shares about his life and some tips on business networking. I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York. I was born in Brooklyn, New York. I also lived in Long Island and Queens before I came here to Minnesota. Why Minnesota? Not that Minnesota's not great. It's just, it's so cold here in the winters and stuff. So what, what? You know what? Oh, that's the first thing I, I thought about when, uh, when the lady that I was with at the time brought up Minnesota. We were both working for the Home Depot at the time, and they were expanding here to the Midwest area. Oh, wow. And, and what happened was that a, a manager of hers saw her potential. So he asked her to come here to Minnesota. So, you know, after me whining about the cold, you know, we came over, we checked it out, we liked what we saw. And in 1996, I was a Minnesotan. <laughs> I love it. We're going to come back to that just in a moment, but I, I am curious for people to, that are listening to hear. Give me your elevator pitch real quick. My name is DJ Greg from Network Entertainment. I can make you and your guests dance any night, all night, and every night. With DJ Greg, it's definitely a party. I love that. I love that so much. I can actually speak to this because I have been in the room when you start DJing and the energy level like goes from zero to 100 within moments. It's amazing. <laughs> I, I, I can attest to that. Um, That's cool, Paul. Thanks. I met the love of my life about 15 years ago. Uh, I, I call her Miss Mel. I have a lot of cute names for her. <laughs> but I met Melanie 15 years ago at a karaoke show that I was hosting in Maplewood. So your DJing, you know, we, your DJing even brought love into your life. I owe a lot to music. I owe, I owe music a lot of things. It's been the most phenomenal key element in my life. So you met, you met I'll call, I can call her Mel? Yeah, 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 that's cool. So you met Mel uh, 15 years ago, and if I'm not mistaken, it, your anniversary is coming up, correct? Absolutely. This this September, we will be married for 10 years. Ooh, I love it. The Big Ten. Congratulations. Ooh, you, thank you, man. Uh, I, You know, I did not see that coming with this lady, you know, being together with her, and it's been magic. That's fantastic. So walk me through some of some of those early beginnings or or how or you know give me give me an idea of what that looked like. Okay, well, I have to start out with my dad because he was the actual first DJ per se that I met. My dad listened to a lot of music, anywhere from Beatles to Rolling Stones to Bob Marley, awesome. uh, to Sam Cooke to Isaac Hayes. And, and growing up with those different musical genres as a kid, you know, that was my first imprint of, of just music. And then growing up around in New York when the time where uh, dance music and hip hop was happening, those elements were brought in. I've also uh, gotten together with, with other local DJs in, in, in high school mm -hmm. and it, it, it just grew on me. What, what happened was I was speaking to a very good friend of mine uh, back then. And I was just going through some things like, you know, wow, what can I do? Uh, you know, I, I want to do something in my life. And, you know, what would it be? And my friend looked at me. He said, you know what, Greg, the only thing that I know that you do very well is buy music. 
<laughs> I, I took offense to it at the time, but you know, years later it came to fruition. He was telling yeah. me, Hey, you should be a DJ. And your dad, was that music on vinyl or what, 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 what are we talking about? Oh man, he had all the vinyl. We even had some eight tracks, man. I remember that, that eight track of, of KC and the Sunshine Band and it would play in the car and then like midway right through like shake, shake, shake your booty. It was like shake, shake, shake. Then you hear a click and then it go <laughs> over to the next track, shake your booty and then the music <laughs> would continue. I was like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> but it worked. I'm curious. I have a question. So, you, so you're obviously a great DJ. Are there any common myths or things about being a DJ that people think are, are true that just are not true? Oh, man, absolutely. The myth is that, you know, DJs, we just stand up, we pump our fist, and we just play music. But there's a lot more to that because you have to be able to read the crowd and you have to know what people's musical tastes are, even if you're entering the room for the first time. And, you know, anybody can play music, as we spoke earlier. You know, I can go in and I can play I'm Maiden and, you know, I could crank out the Ozzy <laughs> all night long. But that, but that may not be what the crowd is into. And, and you know, no disrespect to I'm Maiden and Ozzy. I would, right. <laughs> You know, I mean, they, they, they're brilliant for what exactly. they bring to the table. But as a DJ, what you bring to the table is that you have to play the right reactions for people to get up, start dancing. My, my favorite reaction, especially when I see it from a, a, a lot of the ladies, because they control the dance floor, believe it or not. It's like when you play a song and they just go, ooh, or they put their hands up in the air, that's my song, and they grab their friends yeah. and they go out on the dance floor. To me, that is just like magic. That's when you know you have the crowd where you want them, and then mm -hmm. you can just, you know, take them on a trip. I'm assuming you work with brides quite a bit before their event, or do you, is it just intuitive for you? Well, I, I do work with the bride before the event because I don't want to play a song that she doesn't like, even right. though it may be popular. I had a bride come up to me and, uh, that told me, don't play Happy by Pharrell because I can't stand that song. And, and, you know, I'm thinking in my mind, okay, well, maybe she doesn't like the hat he wears in the video. But no, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's some songs that, you know, that you hear so much that you don't want to hear you know and and i get that but i was very surprised to hear because happy is one of the most popular songs especially this time mm -hmm. uh you know during this time so you right. you 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 just never know what a bride may want to hear or or what a bride may not want to hear you know everybody's different but overall there is this term called wedding music that works pretty much across the board with uh with every crowd but there's there's different nuances in you know in in these settings so you have to be able to adapt to that i, I do want to definitely ask you a couple of things too as far as um like because i've again i've firsthand experienced watching you like in a networking business environment and I just want to ask, so what is your approach mm -hmm. to business networking? My approach to networking is to get to know the other person first, you know, because I can come in a meeting and just lay down my own agenda. And that's not what it really is about. You know, when you're networking, you, you know, all business have a, a common goal. And, and every business is a people business. So I go into it as I'm meeting people and I'm exploring people, what, what they do professionally, what their goals are, uh, you know, the future of their business. And then at that point, I feel that we can share something, we can go back and forth and then make that networking meeting the best one ever. So I'm, I'm looking to, to get to know people first before I lay out who I am. Every business is a people business. Mm -hmm. 
you know, you may call it B to B or P to P, whatever those terms mean. Right. But but to me, it's all about people. Do you remember your first networking event here in the Twin Cities at all? Like, what was it and what was it like? Ooh, yeah, I, I believe I, I went to a, uh, a caterer's uh, mm -hmm. meeting. And in that meeting, I came with that same approach that I had mentioned. But at the time, I didn't know anybody. So, I, of course, you know, you're a little nervous. But I just, you know, stuck to my approach and then said hi to to a few people and you know then slowly I begin to open up and then uh Paula Bushilla from Hopeland Farms told me about uh Twin City Wedding Event Professionals and when I went into that meeting I've already knew who Matt Sherry was oh nice so 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 that kind of like eased up the you know the tensions that you have when you do go into these network meetings <laughs> yeah. because it's like oh wow I know somebody so that just makes it a lot easier and then and then he's introducing me to other people and then you know we conversate and, and that organization has been like really awesome cool you know and i i recommend that uh organization to uh anybody and everybody in the wedding event professional business we just have a moment here is there anything that you like to say to people or let them know before we go and include please include your uh, like where people can find you what I like for people to know is that is that if you want to have fun, it's simply I'm the one. I mean, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it sounds corny, but but you know what? I I really do enjoy working with people, uh, getting them on the dance floor. That's where my passion is, and you can also uh, find me on the djgregellis.com, mm -hmm. or you can go to Facebook. You can find just type in DJ Greg Ellis. And, and I'll be right before your very eyes. You know, come on in, have fun, let's communicate. And when we hit the dance floor, it's definitely a party. I really appreciate you taking the time, Greg, to, to join in and, and share with me and every, all of our listeners. And this has been a delight. So I really appreciate you and, and your time. Paul, I appreciate you also, man. Thanks for having me on. Again, that website for Greg Ellis is djgregellis.com. Ellis is spelled E-L-L-I-S. We appreciate you listening. If you'd like more information about the Twin Cities Wedding and Event Professionals, you can log on to tcwep.com. While you're there, be sure to sign up for our monthly newsletter. All right, everyone, we will see you at our next event. <laughs>